What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. And watch all the paranormal <laughs> activities. Watch all the fucking paranormal activity movies. Yeah, we're opening the pool back up. We're back at the paranormal pool party. Did someone clean this pool in no, the meantime? We need to get this shit skimmed. Yeah, we need to get the little slimy. We need the little ladybug uh, oh, yeah, from vacuum from the second one. <laughs> Yeah, we tested the the pH levels with those little strips. They're all ooh, no, no those good. Those are not good colors. But uh, we're keeping it open anyway, and uh, we're gonna watch Paranormal Activity, the March ones, and this movie is great. Yeah, this movie's fucking great. We're gonna talk about the injustice today. <laughs> that is its Rotten Tomato score, which is a thirty nine percent. Uh, it's yeah, thirty nine. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Because the last... Okay, so the fourth one understandably had a low score because it's not great. No. Um, it's not terrible. Again, like I said, I was disappointed it wasn't an absolute train wreck, but it's not good. But this one is, I think, a fun, good movie. This one vies for my favorite paranormal me activity too. dude me too and i was not expecting that going yeah. into this like I, was I would ex- i would give the edge to the original for being the original yeah but this is probably number two then this one was so fun like yeah i i really think it's up there for me i was so entertained i was not um because there were a few times in that fourth one where i'm like this has to be over soon but this one i was never well, I, like I kept hoping it, you know. I like I hope it's not ending now. Yeah, and it's uh, it's an hour forty too. Like it's not just a ninety minute movie. It had an extra ten minutes on there. No, oh no, Mark Jones is eighty four minutes, dude. Not what we watched. I swear it we was really? an hour forty. Did when we, we watch a it. weird version? I don't know, man. Because yeah, this Wikipedia printout is saying eighty four minutes, but I swear when we watched it, it was an hour forty. Maybe I'm wrong. In any case, the pacing was good. Regardless of what length it was, yeah, it was a good length. it was length. great. I wanted there to be more mm-hmm. the whole time and not in a bad way, just because it was so good. It wasn't like, oh, I, I this, does, this doesn't make any sense. I needed more for this to... And, you know, acknowledgement, Rotten Tomato scores are often not good with oh, horror movies. Yeah, horror movies, you know? I feel like most of the time just... You don't need to look at Rotten Tomatoes for those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's the case where if it has a high Rotten Tomato score, I'm excited. Yes. If it has a low one, I don't factor it in. Yeah. You know, if it's high and everyone says it's, it's good. It's like an extra um, yeah. validation of my excitement. But if, mm-hmm. if something comes out that gets a low score, I'm like, well, let's, let's see. Let's give yeah, it whatever. a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this one is is... So interesting because it's such a departure from these first four, it's which such felt a nice so breath of fresh air. Yes, dude. it was. It was just what I needed after really feeling a little tired after those first four, but still wanting to keep watching these because I, I just wanted to fill in the blanks. Yeah, and no more of the story. And, yes, yeah. you know, and, and see if there was anything left in this well of found footage techniques mm-hmm. to, to take up. And that's why we we put in our Would You Rather episode between four and this one because I'm like, I need a break from the series. I'm I'm tired. I'm still like, I want to watch these new ones, but I just need a break from like the world of it. But now I'm like, I, I want to watch. I know. I'm so worried about being let down after I, I the mean, height of this one, especially after the ending of this one, dude. Yeah, we're going to talk about the ending of this one and how great it is. Yeah. But how fun. This was... You know, it's a spinoff, quote unquote, of the Paranormal Activity series, but it's way more tied to the story than I initially thought. This one does what I was complaining that four didn't do. Yeah. If you remember during our episode about four, I was saying I would have enjoyed four a lot more if it was not done in the style of the first three with the like night number blah. And it's clearly part of the series. I would have liked it more if it was like, 
at first a totally separate thing, but then you realize it's connected and that's what this that's does. That's exactly what this did. And it's so good. It really serves it well. And I'm I'm glad that they did that. Yeah, it's, for this. it's, it's very more... tied into the series. It answers a question or at least shades stuff in. Yeah, yeah. I would say it almost leaves me with more questions, but in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't answer all your questions, which I wasn't expecting it to. I think it'd be these kinds of movies. I'm not expecting all of my questions to be answered in one because how like ham fisted is that going to feel as a found footage you know that's a lot of story to cram into one of these but this one does a good job of really getting into a lot of that and I'm surprised that it does because it's not really part of the main series we all we weren't going to cover it yeah and I'm glad we did because I I truly did not know how big of a part this one is to and what's also interesting is you pointed this out while we were watching you could skip the fourth one. You can movie. skip the fourth one completely. You could watch one, two, three, and then mm-hmm. marked ones. That because, fourth one need not even exist. Because this movie has uh Allie Ray from the second movie. Yep. The the girl, the mm-hmm. like the younger the, girl the from sister. the family. Yeah. yeah. Uh and then also has yep. stuff from the third movie. Yes, it has younger Katie and Christy mm-hmm. from the third one. And like the tapes the that tapes, go missing. And they go and to the, the grandma's house. Yep. At the end of the They Mark go to Lois's ones, house. Which is the same house they went to and at the end of the third one. And then obviously, in like the best shit I've seen in a long time, oh, we got God. stuff from the first one. Oh, man. It was so cool. But there's nothing from the fourth one, I don't think. I don't. That are tied I mean, to this. Right? Uh, nothing about uh no not really because everything i can think of that i'm like oh they discuss it in the fourth one but that had already been kind of discussed earlier. prior to that like there yeah. was nothing with robbie and the- yeah where's robbie <laughs> where's robbie yeah uh marked ones written and directed by our boy christopher b landon mm-hmm. who as we've said numerous times would go on to make the happy death day movies Mm -hmm. which again i'm sure i've said it on this podcast before but when i was on that red carpet every single person in the cast and crew said that he ran an amazing set everyone was super happy it felt like a family and that's super important to me man that's like that's one of the biggest things a director does yes they they set the tone for what a set's gonna be yeah but yeah for sure. And um, so by all accords, it sounds like he ran a very awesome set to be on. And I think especially with the found footage, that's so important because if you're going to have your actors feel like real people, which to make a movie like this successful, you got to have actors that are comfortable, especially when you're working with younger actors like in this one. They're not like kids in this. They're they're. But the lead guy, I think, is twenty years old. Yeah, that's still an like eighteen years. Like that's young. It's young, and that's like a, it's overwhelming. Probably like this is probably like his first big thing. Um, so yeah, you have to have like such a good mood on set and like a good camaraderie with your actors to really get believable performances like you do in this one. Again, I love the acting in this one. Everyone's really great. I think this one is like the hardest I laughed in any <laughs> yeah. of the movies. Like some genuinely big laughs. Um. Oh, I love it. And I it is interesting that this movie is so it's set in a Hispanic community in California, yeah. Oxnard, California. Oxnard, okay. Yeah. Which is a is a departure from the first four. We're and not, also is Hispanic the right term? I think so. Forgive us if we're using the wrong the ro- term. Like yeah. Because I always forget the, the I, like, distinctions looked, between I like looked up I was reading how different reviews talked about it, but then who knows if those reviews were wrong, I'm realizing. Yeah. So if I'm using the wrong language, I apologize. But uh, yeah, this is a Mexican-American community. It seems like it, An yeah. Oxnard. I love the setting of the apartment building they're in. Me too. Yeah. Welcome to my neighborhood. That's my mansion right there. It's actually a cochinero, but... Oh, cochinero is a... Uh, it's a like... <laughs> it's like a place for pigs to live <laughs> <laughs> like a sty yeah it's like a sty okay <laughs> it'd be like clean your room it looks like a cochinero <laughs> that's funny oh it's good so yeah he calls it that after calling it his palace but okay. i love that building it's an apartment building it's like a horseshoe shape yeah so it's got a courtyard in the middle uh we used a- to live in a building where it was like courtyard style oh yeah we did that created some adventures mm-hmm. uh yeah i i just think it's it's great to 
move away from the houses of the first oh four, these God, big houses. Yeah. Because I, I remember thinking watching the first four, maybe, oh, do they kind of have to almost shoot in these more spacious houses because it gives you more room to work with you have more depth of field there's more you there's more places to look with these cameras that are always like stationary and in the corner there's more places for things to pop out and but i i think it's cool to then do this one and you're working with like the opposite kind of building these are small you don't have much room to work with we're not even doing any of the static stuff at night we're no, done with that handheld, that this is yeah. all handheld um, yeah, because he, uh, the main guy, Jesse, who's just graduating high school, uh, he sees another relative's camera and is like, oh, that looks cool. And then he uses his graduation money to go buy a camera, mm-hmm. a, a camcorder, and he gets a GoPro thrown in for free, too, mm-hmm. uh, at a pawn shop. Yeah, so we're which... working with a camcorder and a GoPro. <laughs> and the GoPro. Which is great because they do, they immediately use it for a jackass style yeah, stunt. Yeah, it looks like I'm, <laughs> what's the friend's name? I'm Hector, and this is Laundry <laughs> Basket Down the Apartment Stairs. <laughs> I love the characters in this. Yeah, because it's. I love Jesse and Hector. It's Jesse and his best friend Hector. And Marisol is. And then Marisol is another friend. I Uh, like the name Marisol every time I hear it. I'm like, oh, it is a nice nice name. name." Yeah. He also has a grandma. Oh, boy. Irma. Irma. Played by Renee Victor, who was in Weeds. She was Lupita in Weeds, which is uh, a show that I enjoyed for a couple of seasons. I enjoyed the first season of Weeds. Just like all these other ones, we still get these families established and you really care about the families. I really like the dad. He's barely in it because he's like a working dad. Yes, yeah. You don't see him that often, but I like when he's, he seems like a good dad. Like the brief moments you see him, he, he's like one of the more empathetic dads of the series, even though you don't really see that much of him. Um, What I, what I do like speaking of this kind of family dynamic is like all of these first four it's that frustrating thing and you know this is something I hate in movies not because I think it's bad or that I think it's a, it's a stupid thing to do in movies but because it stresses me out is when no one believes a character and yeah. the character is so um, panicked trying to get the other characters to believe them and everyone's just kind of blowing them off and that's what happens in these first four it's like we're looking at footage and we have the dad telling Allie in the second one like oh it's the wind or you know but I like that in this one there isn't any of that really every like all of his jesse's friends are on board pretty much like they like i they, I guess they get into it together they summon a demon together yeah in church. but <laughs> we don't have we like the grandma is in- instantly freaked out she knows something is wrong and the dad is just concerned and isn't like oh you know you're making stuff up you're i guess they tell him he's being uh, he's overreacting when he finds the picture of his pregnant mom who was pregnant with him with uh, with Anna, who will talk about Anna. It's a scary witch. Was it a bruja? Bruja. Bruja. <laughs> she lives in the apartment downstairs. Shortly after getting the GoPro, and they're, they're like, yeah, Anna, she's a weird old woman who lives right below us in the apartment below us. Oh, we always hear moaning and stuff. Yeah, we hear weird noises coming from there. Yeah, so one night they hear it and they're like, let's put the GoPro on a string and lower it down the vent. And mm. they do. And there's like a naked lady standing there. Yeah, so then they're just looking at this naked lady. This is very illegal. This is a sex crime, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Don't do this. You don't spy on your downstairs we neighbor know it's with a fun. camcorder. It's all like revenge of the nerds. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. a good time until you remember it's not legal. And it's a really <laughs> gross thing to do. But uh, it's a really crazy creepy angle too when they get that gopro down there and it's like through this so grate through and the there's vent, yeah. like she's standing there and it's it looks like a shot from a lynch movie i can't explain it i mm-hmm. think it's just the weird angle and how she's just kind of standing there naked there's something really it's creepy and anna draws like a symbol on her yeah then anna, who, anna's also naked yeah anna comes in and is drawing the the symbol we all know very well at this point it's the circle and the triangle and so they start freaking out and they they pull the GoPro up and of course it makes fucking it's just like banging around <laughs> in the vents. Um but yeah, so I, I do like that there's all this supernatural stuff going on and everyone in this movie, like it, it's not a it's not central to the plot that someone doesn't believe in another character. And I'm glad because it's like that's we're in the fifth movie that's tiring if we're doing that again. Yeah, it's great that they don't have that. It's great that they don't have the night whatever uh cards yes, yeah. Uh, yeah we don't need that mm-hmm. it's unnecessary 
So yeah, Hector, his best friend, lives in the apartment complex with him. So mm-hmm. it, it's a very communal feel there. It's yeah. really nice. They have like a graduation party for Jesse. I in love the, the grad party setup because we get to see Oscar, who becomes an important character later. Oscar is giving the graduation speech at the very beginning. I think he was of the valedictorian. Movie. He's yeah. valedictorian. So we get him set up, and then we get to meet the whole family because they're having a grad party right after the ceremony. And yeah, it is like this really nice communal. Like we got the string lights and everyone bringing food it's like oh it's really it just looked nice it, it did look nice but then it's great because you have this really warm outside in this courtyard and there's a great contrast when we look and we see oh and that's where anna lives and her apartment is just that's crazy anna's apartment she lives right under me she covers the window so nobody sees what she's doing so yeah they see oscar one night i i forget what they're doing i think they're fucking with fireworks because they're really just jackassing they are, jackassing yeah, it up with these cameras yeah and yeah they're like filming some fireworks and then oscar jumps out of anna's apartment and runs oh off Oh my god! and they're like what the fuck isn't that is it right that night when emergency vehicles come and they see anna's body being wheeled it's right away? near the beginning yeah yeah so Anna. Is- oh yeah, no, it is that night because that's what he's running away from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we realize. Oh, Oscar murdered Anna. We didn't even know that they knew each other. What the fuck's going on? Yeah. So yeah. Oscar's on the lam. Anna's dead. Mm-hmm. And we don't know what's going on at this point. Yeah, I was very intrigued by the fact that Anna just gets killed right away because they kind of had it set up. But Anna's pretty important, Anna. We're like, oh, it's, she's this witch that lives in the building. And we know that her apartment is the scary apartment. So we figure, okay, we're going to, you know, she's going to be kind of our villain in this. Or, But no, like she, Oscar kills her like right away. <laughs> and at this point, we're still like, who the fuck is Oscar? Because they just keep, because they wouldn't explain to each other who Oscar is. But later in the movie, I think it's a scene with the parents with a, or the dad, at least someone who they have to be like, oh, Oscar, he was valedictorian. Yeah, they mentioned that. And, you know, you see him giving the speech. So it's you you definitely have the sense that it's weird for him to be hanging out with old women. Oh, yeah. In the I'm just saying complex. I didn't connect at all that that character was giving that speech. Oh, OK. Until sure. they were like Oscar was valedictorian. Yeah. And they it's it's like. How they do it in the best of these movies, Mm -hmm. like the first couple, is it comes out very naturally. They Mm -hmm. mention his brother pretty early on. They Mm -hmm. mention Oscar's brother, Arturo. Mm -hmm. And first they, like, just mention him offhand. Then they say later, like, oh, isn't he, like, in a gang or he's in a gang? And so he becomes a character later. Yeah. And by the time he shows up, uh, you already know who he is and his situation. Mm -hmm. So, again, yeah, it's done very naturally. Oh, I love Arturo and his friend Santo. (laughs) And they are maybe my favorite characters in this. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Sometimes when you're watching movies like this, like, oh, we got a coven of witches or we've got, you know, sometimes you just want to do what Arturo and Santo do. And that's not like a horror movie rule, (laughs) you know, because then it's not much of a horror movie. Yeah. We'll get there. I love them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I also love uh, Grandma, uh, Grandma Irma, who oh, does God, double I shots lo- of tequila. Holy <laughs> fuck. Grandma's drunk in this. Yeah, they're doing shots together in the kitchen. And he's got that cute little dog, Chavo. Chavo. Chavo's Chavo's a little a very Chihuahua. good dog. He's so cute. I know. Grandma, I was like, oh, my God, Grandma Irma's me taking her top off. She's so <laughs> drunk. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like just a fun cast to watch. I know, a lot I of love, fun characters. Yeah, they're all like really great. Yeah, yeah I love that uh, Jesse and Hector are really, you know, they're just idiot teens with a camera. Yeah. They're not like bad guys. They seem to like to be, you know. They seem like good kids. They good do, kids. I mean, who just fuck around with their camera, which like. That's yeah, what aside kids from, do. you know, spying on their neighbor downstairs. Yeah, uh, but, not uh, good, yeah. Yeah, they just play basketball and light fireworks. That's cool, man. Yeah. They go downstairs, though, and check out Anna's apartment. This is after the murder. This is after she... So they're like, oh, it's empty. Let's yeah. go fuck around in here, which, guys... <laughs> My my dudes, you can't do... Like, if there's been a murder... Okay, if you live in an apartment building, there's been a murder in an apartment that's right next to yours. You don't go into the crime scene and put your fingerprints all over everything. <laughs> and they everything. do. They walk in there and They're touch everything. everything. Jesse keeps telling Hector not to, but Hector is not the smartest man. And it's like, they live in the... Bu- like, <laughs> who's the suspect going to be them? <laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> at one point, Hector is like, oh, I have this head me cable... <laughs> Head, yeah, yeah Jesse's like it's HDMI, HDMI and he starts to laugh and then it cuts away it's pretty funny <laughs> yeah it's- that's the thing that I, I 
I love about this one is how I think a lot of it is these actors improving and like just goofing around and they get to add like what has to be so much personal experience because Christopher B. Landon is, I'm pretty sure, a white dude uh, who is writing and directing this movie that takes place in this specific community. Yeah, which I'm I'm guessing he did not have this experience growing up. Yeah, like, this yeah. was not his experience but growing up. But I think up. what's unique about the way that these movies are shot is you effectively have your actors being co-writers because if you're letting your act, if you're just telling them, all right, you have to get to this, this, and this beat, but the actors are filling that all in with basically themselves. Like they, they're bringing their own experiences to it and they're like kind of coloring in that world. You get to have something that feels real and feels authentic to someone's actual life versus if Christopher B. Landon had like scripted this whole movie and given them lines to say, I, you don't get that. You don't get this movie. I don't think. Yeah. And I think that that's like, that's why that, you know, this works regardless of the fact that it's like, you got a white dude writing and directing it. Yeah. It still feels like really sincere and yeah, I, uh, I, genuine. I, oh. I feel like you can tell that the cast was given a lot of room to, you know, Basically, yeah, like I, I really think this is when you basically have actors that are co-writers. I, I love when they're that's... walking around Anna's apartment and Jesse is like, hey, there's like a little dog standing. He's like, oh, it's it's Chavo with a grenade <laughs> yeah. in his mouth. I'm like, it's corn. It's corn. <laughs> while, they're, while they're looking around Anna's house, I mean, they hear a baby cry, which is spooky. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, and but it's just a, a baby doll in a crib. Ooh. Yeah, but, what the <laughs> but they also see a box boxes of old tapes. Yeah, and Mart, they, Katie and mm, Christy, nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, and that's just kind of a if you hadn't seen any of the other movies, it would have just been a weird like, huh, all right, and then that's it. But if like us, if you've watched all these in a row, ooh, that's fun. Yeah, that's, that's a lot like, of oh, fun. Fuck, how did those get there? And then you realize that's where they must have gone in that. Uh, that second one because they're like, oh, all the tapes are, or no, the third one. They yep. they're like, oh, all these tapes went missing, and that's where they ended up. Oh, it's so fun. I love all the ways that it's tied in. Uh, while they're down there, they do take a book from Anna's apartment. Guys, yeah. again, don't <laughs> do that. If you think your neighbor's a witch, because it don't take the witch. It book. talks about destinos profanos, like profane places yeah. to go to, and it involves having like a magic. black mirror. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah, magic doors and stuff. And they have Marisol. This is reading. when Marisol, Marisol really comes is like, in. "All right, I'm gonna help you with this book." Yeah, so they spray paint a mirror black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Marisol is looking at this book they stole from Anna's, and she's saying it's it's all these medieval drawings and it's, she's like, it's, it's something about time travel and magic doors. So I'm like fucking pumped already <laughs> that we're, we're getting into that kind of shit in this one. I love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So they decide let's go do the spells in this book at this church down the road at this church overnight. Cause they're <laughs> like, Oh, it looks different in the dark. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's a church. They yeah, go to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I think it's just the church that they, they go to regularly, but they sneak in and it's all dark and the church, the whole church sequence. I was very freaked out. Oh man. It's good. There's a, honestly this movie, I was scared. It a has lot a of it. couple of really good scares. It has very good tense sequences it's just filmed really well yeah yeah so they go to this church and in the right in front of the eyes of god they <laughs> decide to just summon a fucking demon and uh they they what happens is they draw the or not, no they don't draw they duct tape it she duct Marisol tapes duct tapes the, fucking geometrically perfect it's shapes real good. onto it's the ground the, like it's the triangle with the circle in it and she makes a perfect she made a perfect fucking circle duct with duct tape dude it looks really good yeah it taken a while <laughs> Uh, and then they put the black mirror. It is a literal mirror, spray painted black. It's not a television like the uh, the, the, <laughs> the Netflix metaphorical series. black mirror. Right. Yeah. Um, so they put the black mirror in the in the circle, and they each sit in like one of the corners of the triangle, and they do the little spell. They summon and, Incubus. Uh, nothing happens. They say, "Hey, Incubus, wish you were here." Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good, good joke. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> They they do the spell to summon the demon. Nothing really happens. Hector Hector's leaves. out of here either because he's got stuff tomorrow morning or because he's scared. 
I'd be that that would be my excuse too. I'd be like, oh shit, I forgot I have a, a shift tomorrow early. <laughs> his sign spinning shift. That's his job yeah, he's as a, a sign, sign spinner. spinner yeah. <laughs> Marisol and Jesse stay and they end up hearing noise that they think is Hector. It's not Hector. And they go into the basement of this church, which <sighs> is one, you're in a church at night. That's already scary. Mm-hmm. Then you go below ground and then into a bathroom. And then they start checking the stalls, oh my God. which is, it's such good tension. The last stall, like the handicap stall is the door is locked yeah. and he fucking crawls under. Although he I will say, under. I will say these stalls have very nice privacy. There's I, not was the sh- gap, I was thinking that, you know, I saw those and I instantly was like, oh, they don't have the gaps between the sides. Like you, you know, yeah, those are good privacy wise. I have worked at a place, however, where the door, it, it there's it's no gap door. and the door goes yeah, all the way to the nice. floor. That's excellent. Those are you really can, nice. Yeah, just go take a fucking snooze in there if you need to. Yeah. Man. <laughs> no one's going to question it. But yeah, at this one, there is the gap under the door. And yeah, he sticks the camera under there, but there's nothing there. So they go. Yeah, to, I feel like you just pan up and it's Toby standing on the toilet. Like, like oh, shit. After they did this little ceremony, uh, Jesse starts having dreams about old women and he wakes up yeah. with a bite mark on his arm. Yeah, and we've seen this bite mark before on a oh, yeah. Katie's. On Katie. Yeah, I That's think from the first Katie one. got one, and I'm trying to think of who else had like We see him. Toby's a biter. He's nasty. Oh, yeah, Toby into some kinky shit. He got nasty Arr. teeth. Arr. He's got like weird lamprey teeth. They're gross. Oh, ew. Lampreys are probably one of the most disgusting creatures yes, on this they earth. They're so fucking They're- gross. And the fact that people make pies out of them. Is that real? Like, do you, is that a real food? Is that a real or thing? Is that or is that, that just George R. R. Martin, Martin thinking about like, what could I eat what in a pie? What could I put in a pie? <laughs> Lamprey pie. Get the fuck out of so here. Nasty. Hey, you want some leech pudding? Ew. No. No, I don't. Hey, you want to talk about our sponsor this week, DoorDash. DoorDash. We all love getting food brought to us. Yeah. Everyone likes that. Yeah, it's great because you, you need to eat. Yeah, it's we're a bad sad at fact that. Of life. We're pretty bad at it because we're usually just working. But luckily, DoorDash, you can get food delivered that maybe you normally couldn't get delivered. It's in all 50 states, too, which is pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, you can get restaurant food delivered to you. Yes, exactly. And you don't have to put on pants. Yeah. I often don't. I, I feel like how many of these are we like the benefit of this is you don't have to wear pants. Probably a lot. That's a big selling point but for us. But with DoorDash, you're not putting on pants and you're uh, sustaining your life. Yeah. With the food that you need to survive. Exactly. So if you want to try DoorDash and get some food delivered to you, maybe you're getting all spooked listening to the podcast. You're too scared to go outside and get food. You can have someone bring you food. Maybe you could have a jar of peppers delivered to your door. Oh, I bet you could. (laughs) If you want to try DoorDash right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter promo code DEADMEAT. All one word spelled like the show. That's $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash app from the App Store and enter promo code DEADMEAT. And one more time, that's <laughs> promo code DEADMEAT for $5 off your first order from DoorDash. You can have dead meat delivered to your door with DoorDash using dead meat. Yeah, they're not going to deliver live. You can't get farm animals delivered to you. No, just dead stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Oh yeah, and Chavo no, no Oh yeah, Chavo is growling at Jesse and it's that no. That, that would be the worst That'd ever. be the worst thing. Like everything else in this is bad, but like having your pet not love you cuz you're a demon now, that's yeah. a bummer. If I woke up and Lucy just like was completely averted and I couldn't rub her belly, I, know. I don't know what I would do, man. Yeah. That would really hurt. Like all the other stuff is whatever, <laughs> but like yeah, your pet being afraid of you. That's yeah. the worst punishment of all. And he's got a dick on his face. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Hector draws a dick <laughs> on his face before he wakes up. It's so funny when his sister comes in. Who, his sister isn't really a character. But she's so funny, the she, little bit that she's in it. Her line right there is like, <laughs> it's like, you just, 
you have a dick on your face, fool. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. So I think it's like, it's right around here where they, for some reason, are like, let's all play Simon. Yeah, I forget how Simon comes into play. I forget too. But it's that it's that game, the electronic I wonder game. If there's, I, do people not know this? I wonder if Probably. it's old enough. But there I feel are at like least some people out there who don't know Simon. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it's one of those things where do they still re do they still make them now? And, well, yeah, but yeah. now... There's so many more options. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know? Simon's just a, it's a very simple game where it's a, it's a circle. You've got a red light, yellow light, green it's light. It's like Simon Says. And it, yeah, it's Simon Says. It's just a memory game. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Because each, each mm-hmm. color has like a tone. Mm-hmm. So that'll help you. Remember. I want to break out of Simon and fucking rock that shit. I feel like I'd be so fucking good at Simon. You said you get stressed. It stresses me out. What that stresses me out and Bop It fucking stresses well, me Bop out. Well, Bop It is inherent. Bop It feels like you're diffusing a bomb. Yeah. Yeah, Bop It is very anxiety inducing. Where that song gets faster and faster. Bop It. Yes. What about the one like Bop It Extreme where there's like Flick It. No. Too much. Like my classic Bop It. But yeah, no, Simon stresses me out. So they have it out and they're they're playing with it and they uh they say something where the Simon seems to agree with them because it beeps green. Well, like, yeah, because it's not working. Oh, and, that's right, it won't work. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think they start like making fun of Hector. I really think like it thought you're so stupid that it stopped working. Nah, shut up, man. Well, do you think Hector is stupid? Oh, uh, do you think Hector is stupid? <laughs> And then, yeah, they're like, are you here with us? And it, it lights up so green. And they realize, oh, shit, we can ask the the Simon. And they sell it well, too. They're like, I can't believe we're doing this. Uh, like, yeah, they, they do sell it very well. They're, they call it out as being a weird thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. they Yeah, I that whole scene plays out like I think it would exactly in real life if you're a bunch of kids messing with the Simon and it seems to be responding to you. It'd be very funny at first. Like, oh, ha, ha. But then... I feel like you'd get into it. Like, oh shit, yeah. there's a ghost here. You'd want to see how far it goes, it. Uh-huh. for sure. And so it, they can ask it yes or no questions now. And I love that Simon is a board game I would have never considered you could use to communicate with these spirits. Like, obviously a Ouija board. Mm-hmm. But there's so many ways you can talk to demons and ghosts. And Simon is a great one. That's a great one. Mm-hmm. Even though uh, Grandma Irma does not like it. She no. takes it away. Grandma Irma walks in and she... <laughs> yeah. oh, they man. show her They it. show her. They, they ask like... it. They ask. They want to know if the board or if Simon can understand Spanish. So they ask it a question in Spanish. And Irma just... It's like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> she. I think she like grabs it and like takes it away. And she's wiping everything down with vinegar. If we had all just listened to Irma. Yeah, I love when they're fucking with cards though. With then they're like, "Am I holding the Ace of Hearts?" And it like it says yes. Am I? It, I was literally writing down before the character even said. I'm like, dude, you could just make this a little act and make all kinds of money doing magic. And then I think Jesse says, "Dude, I could make so much money <laughs> with this." Dude, he could make way more after the next scene. Because that's when they go to the basketball court, and while they're leaving, they get like they start to get kind of mugged by some dudes, mm-hmm. and Jesse like fights them off and flings them across space, just Holy like into a vending machine and across shit. the lot. Those dudes go flying, yeah, and like that's something on video where. Like it's so it's so clearly not natural. <laughs> like if he, I think he shows it to his sister, and his sister's like, "What the fuck? Yeah, you guys." And so now he's got all these weird kind yes. of superpowers. It reminds me of Spider Man. It reminds me of the the Sam Raimi Spider Man. Like when he's running down the stairs to get to breakfast, and he does like he like runs up the wall around the stairs. Oh yeah. Um, that's what this reminded me of. Is it's like this kid who realizes I have all these powers. Some of his friends are just fucking around, and these were some of my favorite. Yeah, scenes in this because first he's like he like falls backwards and, and just he like just stops, in, stops midair. in midair. He's at like a like a like a forty five degree yeah, angle. Yeah, yeah. And then Hector's like, "Oh, let me try, let me try," and he just falls flat <laughs> on his ass. It's like, why didn't it catch me? Yeah, he falls good. He really is. It's like, a good fall. He falls dude. straight. Like he's he's flat. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Damn. And, and then <laughs> he can. Jesse's other powers include, and I, I love the idea, by the way, of a superhero who this is their only power. <laughs> like these isolated 
abilities being like a specific superhero's power. So we got a superhero that can blow up an air mattress in one breath. Yeah. And it just expands. And then he even <laughs> like Hector lays on it and he does it again. Like he blows it up with Hector laying on mm-hmm. it. Fucking hilarious. The funniest one is the fucking skateboarding. Oh my God. Holy I shit. He turned off gravity in Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yes, yes. Like he turned on low grav mode because he he skates to our- It really does look like That's exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah, it it really does look like some sandbox like Gary's mod shit. Yeah. It's like he it's Jesse, like he's he's doing he's what he's He's going to grind, down. yeah. He does like an ollie into a grind, but when he ollies, he's like, "Woo!" Yeah, he flies fucking in the fucking flies air. into space pretty much, and actor just goes, "Dude, you flew right over me." We laughed so hard at that. I think just because it was so unexpected, and also the idea that like he shredded so fucking hard, he <laughs> like went to space pretty much. Yeah, it looks hilarious. It's so funny. It's so I, funny. It was gen- and not funny in like a oh Liz looks bad kind of way, but funny in like a, I was not expecting that to happen, and yeah. He like went, he like just Tony hawked into heaven. It was <laughs> fucking incredible. And yeah, I love that they upload videos of it onto YouTube, <laughs> and everyone's like, it's fake. fake. Yeah, I, I, why are you comments so negative? Man? I yeah, I think as as people who post things on YouTube, that little scene was much appreciated. It's just them reading their YouTube comments, everyone being like, fake, fake. And then someone be like, oh, wow, what program did you use to do this? And then, yeah, why are YouTube comments so negative? Why are they so negative? (laughs) Mine are mostly positive. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're lucky. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, now fucking Jesse is feeling like he can do anything. So they roll up into a block party. Not just any block party. They know that this is like a gang, like... There's some gang yeah, members. Yeah, he's like, there's some gang stuff. members here, and some guys like, what? He's like, not you, not you. Not you, dude. You're you're cool. Yeah. And, the, and then yeah, they take some girls home from this party, dude. Dude, that's, make sure you're not stepping on no toes. I dude. know. That's all I could think about. But yeah. I was also, I mean, my this is where my brain is. I'm not even like, oh, they could totally score some chicks. I'm thinking. They could show up to this bar or to this party and do all kinds of dumb bar tricks and win like twenty bucks. <laughs> right, <laughs> but no, they opt for the ladies. <laughs> yeah, 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 and, they, uh, yeah. But instead of bringing them home, they Irma's home. Yeah, because Irma's home, and I love when they look through the window and the girls see Irma asleep in the living room. They go, "Oh, she's so cute." <laughs> it's like true. Yeah, Irma is very cute. We love Irma a lot at the Dummy <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> yeah, but when you're young and horny, dude. You Anywhere will suffice. You don't mind if the uh, abandoned apartment below you is a murder they scene. They wheeled out Anna's dead body like a day before that. There's still blood everywhere, I think. Yeah. But they they realize no one's going to be in the murder apartment. Nope. So we can all go fuck in this murder apartment. They even fucking tell them. They're like, or I think Hector does. And Jesse's like, dude. Yeah, yeah Jesse's like, come on, dude. You're going to fucking I'd be ruin such the, the Hector. I'd be like, hey. Someone got murdered. <laughs> well, Hector and his girl leave because, like, she's not really. She's not in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he. Yeah, he's doing Jesse a favor. By, well, like, I mean, they both are because both Jesse and uh, Penelope, the girl he picks up, she's in. She's leading. Yeah, yeah, she's leading him to the back room. So yeah. both their friends are like, "All, All right, right, well, yeah, we'll, we'll go, get out of your hair. We'll go, like, we'll go play Simon. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll leave. All right, this is yeah. good. Yeah, good friend. We'll go move. practice blown up air mattresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, they they never get to to get it on because they start making out. But since in you, Paranormal Activity tradition, by the way, we almost get a sex tape. That's right, almost. It has to happen in every movie, and I'm glad it happened in this one as well. Yeah. Again, this I I want to make a list of all the little tropes of Paranormal Activity because I think. They are underappreciated, and I think they're so funny because it's like we have beads. Katie's beads. We even get a shot of uh, the bead table on this. Yeah, it's well, awesome. Yeah, it's great. The beads come up in this one. Uh, yeah, almost making a sex tape usually happens. Um, I don't know. I, I just love that there's little little trademarks, and it really shows that there is care in making these movies feel connected in ways that maybe you don't consciously realize but just the fact that it's a running bit that at some point someone will try to fuck someone else in front of the camera it's very funny yeah but while jesse's upstairs getting a condom because they practice safe sex yeah fucking penelope hears something coming from the floor yeah she hears some like scratch it's scratching and then a and fucking hatch opens holy... up from the floor well she she no because she, oh, she finds, finds it, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah which 
Ew. Okay. Yeah. She hears the noises and she's, she can hear it coming from like somewhere. And then she's feeling around on the carpet and then she pulls this chain up and then pulls a fucking door open. Fuck that. And then an arm reaches and up and tries to pull her down, up. man. That's so good. And she gets the fuck out of there. And we see on camera Oscar pop up from below yes, ground and ew. get out of there. Oscar. And his eyes are all Ultimate. black. Ultimate. Can you imagine? You're like trying to hook up with this hot chick. And then the fucking valedictorian of your class <laughs> pops up from the floor and just black ruins eyes. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, God damn it, Oscar. <laughs> you fucking nerd. <laughs> like, get out of here. Wait, so were you valedictorian or? I was I salutatorian. Was, okay. Second in the class. I still gave a speech. It was highly regarded. Oh, yeah? I think I have a tape of it somewhere. I'm going to have to Really? I want to watch that. Sometime. Yeah. The guy, Oscar's speech, um, he has a very Barack Obama cadence. <laughs> yeah. And I think I someone mean, was definitely watching videos of Barack Obama. Oh, yeah, a 2014 valedictorian? Yeah, he's probably watching oh, yeah. Obama. <laughs> now, I know change isn't always easy, but change is what's going to allow us to grow as individuals and embrace our destiny. He ends up talking to Oscar. Yeah. And Oscar's like... His eyes are all black. All black. He says, she put it in me. Yeah, she put it inside me. And it's it's what's happening to you. And we have the same mark. Yeah, he's also got a bite. And he says, uh, the only the only way to stop it is just to kill yourself. Oh, yeah. So, cool, Oscar. I'm going to go home now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is that when Oscar fucking kills himself? Yeah, they, they're they outside. Um, oh, yeah, he like runs off and they run off looking for him. Mm -hmm. And then they're outside on the street, Hector across the they're street. By the, they're back by the church where they... Yeah, and they're like yelling back and forth to each other across the street about like, where's Oscar? And then boom, Ooh, that Oscar That scared me. Yeah, that got me. Scare. Oscar just falls onto this car that's right by him. And we realize he jumped off the church. Yeah, the roof of the church. That's really high up, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Oscar. Yeah. Valedictorian forever in our hearts. <laughs> now Jesse's realizing, do I have to worry about a... Because he knows something's weird. He's got weird superpowers. Yeah, but... and he goes downstairs to where Oscar had been hiding that little hatch. Oh, and there's all kinds of spooky shit down there. They got there. fucking painter's tarps hanging from the ceiling. That's, which not, is, that's never that's a good sign. always terrifying. Never a good sign. Yeah. If, if there's tarps hanging up and you know that there hasn't been any construction or <laughs> no one's painting anything and they're up there anyway, something weird's going on. <laughs> they He finds pictures of Lois... Katie and Christie's grandma. They find he finds a picture of Lois with Anna and Anna, who was the the witch who lived in this witch. Well, she and I, I quote, no, she was a fucking witch. I don't yeah. know why I'm saying quote, no, she was. It's and, a horror movie. She actually was a witch. And then his mom, when she was pregnant with, with him, him yeah. and his mom is passed. Uh, they established that earlier naturally when his sister's like, "Mom would have been proud of you." That's right. When he graduates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and and the picture of him as a baby too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So. Anna's got all these pictures of him from yeah. his life. At and even this earlier, table. when Anna confronted them, when they were like trying to uh, have a lo another little kid like knock on her door, she yelled at them and said, "You don't know what's going to happen to you," or something like that. So, oh, I didn't even catch yeah, that. Yeah, they set up a lot of this, man. So yeah, even the dad at this point is noticing that things aren't right with Jesse. Says, "You don't eat, you don't sleep. I hear you get up at night." Yeah. And Jesse's like, "What are you talking about?" So apparently something's going on that even Jesse's like not in control of now. Yeah, yeah. And he fucking there's that scene where he's in the bathroom. Fuck this! I couldn't even watch it's this. So, it's so bad, disgusting. dude. He's like, "What? What is that?" Yeah. And he like pulls this string or this hair it's or something so gross. out of his eye, out of his fucking. It reminded eyeball. me of the ring. Oh, yeah. Because that kind of happens in that, too. So... She's, like, pulling hair. Oh, it's gross. Oh. And he's pulling him out of, like, his nose. But and... also, wouldn't it feel good? It might feel a little good. To, like, pull it out and that's relief. Oh, it's so, oh, it's so gross. This is kind of, I feel like this scene is some of the last time we have with Jesse where he's Jesse. Yeah. Because, which I, I honestly, like, I felt there's a shot of Hector where there was such genuine sadness on his face that it's like my friend's not my friend anymore. And like, I felt it. It's such good nonverbal acting in that moment. Say something interesting. Just, just get this shit on my face. What? Bro. You don't like this? Stop, man. What the fuck's wrong? I don't need that anyway. Maybe that could be your best friend. 
so yeah, they're concerned about how Jesse's acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely acting out of he's character. He's super aggressive. Mm -hmm. There's one I I don't know when exactly this is, but they go to like some store and Jesse oh, yeah. just like I think Marisol is talking to some dude that's a friend of hers, and Jesse gets all weird and possessive, and gets into a fight then he with starts him. freaking out. And the guy who works there is like, I'm gonna call it cops, and he comes out after him with a bat, and, and then Jesse just, like, Jesse just fucking grabs the bat. Yeah. Because he's super strong and scary. So, yeah, Jesse's super scary at this point. Yeah. And uh, they go to talk to Oscar's brother, uh, who had been established. Arturo. Arturo. Had been mentioned. Lo I love Arturo. He's yeah. such a minor character that I fucking love. <laughs> First of all, he's got a cool look. Mm -hmm. That guy, you don't fuck with Arturo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, what's wrong with your boy, man? But he also <laughs> is going to, like, help them because they, they knew his brother. So, he's going to help him out. And yeah, and he shows them what Oscar was getting into yeah. near the end of his life, which includes a whole bunch of, like, news articles Lots and stuff. Lots of decoupage going on at the end of Oscar's <laughs> life. He got really into decoupage, and he has made a collage covering his whole closet. They also see there's a number for an alley. Yeah, Ellie Ray. Next to a newspaper clipping where if you've seen the second movie, you realize this is the sister from the second movie. There's an article about her um, family all being murdered and she's missing, I think. But it has a number yes. for her because I guess Oscar was in communication with her. Yes. There's also all the news stories about firstborn child, uh, firstborn boys. First, yeah. And they're like, wait, Arturo, wouldn't you have been the firstborn boy? And he says, oh, well, uh, Oscar was adopted. Oscar was adopted. So yeah. Oscar was a firstborn Lots of boy. adoption in this series. Yeah. Yeah. So they meet with Allie at a park. Allie just fills them in on everything they need to know <laughs> she basically tells them okay this is this coven uh they brainwash women into giving up their firstborn kids so that this demon can possess the boys right it's like an army of possessed young men is yeah. basically what these witches are creating and then she shows them like the symbol and i'm trying to think of what else she shows them a whole bunch of stuff she's an exposition machine yeah i guess the coven's called the midwives mm-hmm I also love that, like, Allie now is this grizzled woman who just for years has been, like, researching this cult and knows everything about them. Like, where's her little weird standalone movie? Yeah, it's fun that they bring her back. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. Yeah, it's, you, you have to go back to the second one for her. That's the thing is, I think this movie is so solid that I'm wondering if people who reviewed it, and I'm sure this is the case, where I think if you just watch this and you either haven't seen the first movies or haven't seen them in a while and don't remember all this stuff, none of this means anything. And I could see how if you don't realize it's connected to like this broader universe, it could all seem so random, mm -hmm. especially like, oh, there's some creepy tapes. And oh, look at these two creepy little girls. And I could see if you don't realize that they're from- Oh, did we miss that scare? What? Of the little girls in the basement. Oh, were they in the, the trap door? They go down there twice. Yeah. I think. Yeah, okay. But they yeah, they are in like that that trap. Yeah, door they're in the area. trap door oh, underneath. Oh god, the yeah. yeah. At and any rate, we see scare. we see young Katie and Christy. If you, so if you don't realize it's connected to someone who just kind of is watching this casually is like, "Oh, it's some creepy girls whatever. It's a horror movie. We're doing the creepy girls thing whatever. I'm over it." But if you know the <laughs> movies, you realize that this is characters from the other one and then you also realize wait this is not the 80s why are they little kids here and why are they in this basement it's insane yeah it I sets mean, up all the, kinds the of wikipedia weird... calls them ghosts the ghosts of young katie and christy oh what and i don't know if that's true or what i don't know if that's ghosts because they're alive i don't know man and i, have no I just idea. figured that they did the time travel thing? I figured that they came there? through my, okay. So my kind of <laughs> guess, I guess let's, let's just get into all this shit. Cause we're, you, you know, we're coming up on an hour here anyway. So let's kind of get to like what the end of this movie and like sure, what the yeah. whole overall thing is. So Arturo and Santo, Santo is Arturo's friend. They're fucking scary looking dudes. And I love them. They go with, uh, Jesse, or sorry, no. uh, Hector and Marisol, because Allie tells them 
Jesse is going to be at this house yeah, because for there's ritual. some final ritual that's going to happen. And Hector is, or Jesse at this point is fucking scary. He's like James McAvoy. He's like the animal oh, or the beast. In split, yeah. yeah, that's Dude, like what he at is. At one point, he's, he's, uh, he's torturing the dog. Yeah, yeah, he has Chavo up on the I ceiling. It. It's so and sad. I know, I know it's not real, but I still hate I it. I know, poor little Chavo. And Hector's like, Dude, you're hurting Chavo. And I'm like, Uh. You're hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> so they go. They go to this this house where this final ritual is going to be, and it's it's Lois's house from the the end of the third the one. end of the third movie. Yep. Fuck, I love it, and I yeah. love too. I think it was so smart of them, and who knows if they'd planned for this, but they picked a house that has a very distinct style outside or at least a distinct feature where when you see it you know that it's this house from the third one and that's well, that for me walkway. what verifies it yeah the, that that, that's what i mean is yeah. it's got little signs to it it's as very soon as you odd. see it and it's from such a memorable part of the yes, end of the third so movie. i think it's so cool that they were able to use the location that you see it and you recognize it right away so then you know like oh fuck we're at lois's house and they don't need to tell you where yeah. you are you know because at the end of the third movie uh the, i forget the character's name but he walks down with the camera and he yeah. it's lo- like the people are in there <sighs> so good yeah but my favorite is arturo and santo have brought Bags just of guns. Bags of guns. <laughs> and this is what I'm talking about when I'm like, it's not much of a horror movie if we're able to just roll up and kill everyone. But sometimes that's what you want to do. <laughs> and it's what you kind of fantasize about doing if you're these characters. And I love that they they blow away some of these witches, dude. They go flying. It's kind of great. Um, yeah, it's after they find a woman in like a stable she's in or like, like a, a horse cell. stable. Yeah. I'm assuming it's one of the women who's given birth to, to a the boy, firstborn, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yep, it's great. Unfortunately, uh, Arturo and Sanjo both, they... They get killed. They get killed, the yeah. Witches. The coven is all-powerful. They're able to beat these two dudes. Rest in peace. Rest yeah. in power, <laughs> Arturo and Santo. So Marisol and Hector are left running around Lois's house. Yeah. And then Marisol gets off. She, like, falls ooh, that's through. The, that's another the, ooh, really good scare, this is dude. A good, this is another great scare. It's like the of. Oscar one. Yes, and this is a, a style of scare that I also really like. Um, kind of, I think last episode I was talking about how scares that are creepy after the fact, and they're not jump scares. They're just, when you think about it, you realize, ooh, that was actually really creepy what I was looking at. But this one I think is such a good redirect because uh, Hector's filming, and he's filming all these covered chairs that have, like, paint claws on them or, like, drop claws. and. Oh, yeah. Uh, you see one of them start to move. There's like a person sitting in the chair and it kind of almost starts to like rise. It looks like someone's about to sit up out of the chair. So you're looking at that and then Marisol just falls out of nowhere through like the glass ceiling of this room. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That actually really scared me. That's great. And so she did. Poor Hector. Hector's running around like, you know, he's so fucked. Everyone's fucked in these movies. Yeah. Like no one's making it out. Je- yeah. Jesse is chasing Hector now. Like, yeah. Scary Jesse. Jesse and Hector runs upstairs. There's also a witch lady. Oh yeah, who's right there Ooh, after Marisol. Yeah, she scary. was scary. Ooh. So yeah, Hector goes upstairs and uh, locks himself in a room upstairs, and fucking Jesse starts pounding through the door. He, he at first like Hector, bro, please, I'm so scared, I'm so scared. And she, Hector's <laughs> like, I'm not opening this fuck door, you, bro. I'm not letting you in, and that's when Jesse just fucking punches Pun- a hole yeah. through the door. Yeah, it's great. So Hector sees this other door in this room and it's figures this is a way on out. It. And he's it's got, a and creepy so door. It's real. It's a creepy door. I'm thinking about it and getting creeped out. That's awesome. Because we we know we've, we've been talking about weird doorways and time travel. So we're like, where the fuck? Like, you're yeah, just. Yeah, this is one of those so profane scary, places. But also, I'm so excited for him to go through this door because, like, what's going to be there? And, and he does. And he, the camera glitches I love a little this. bit. I love that the camera glitches because I think it's a cool idea that technology would be affected by time travel. Yeah, because he comes out and he's fucking in that shitty house. He's in the, the first house from the first activity. one. I'm like up on the couch jumping up and down at this point because I'm so pumped. Like, And you only is... get more excited when he, he looks on the counter and it's a bunch of beads. Oh my God. Yeah, he's walking around the house. He's like, the where am one. I? We get a shot of the table of beads and I cheer and... It's it is like the house just lovingly recreated from the first like minus it, one jar of peppers. I don't think the jar of peppers is in it. I'll have to look, but I think we're out of peppers. Hey, it's Chelsea again. I realized going frame by frame through the end of this movie, the jar of peppers is there. Impeccable attention to detail. We can all breathe now. 
the peppers are there. Okay, back to the podcast. I think this is such a cool way to come full circle and explain. Yeah. I think I think this explains a bunch of other things about like certain scares and these other ones. Like I almost think that someone coming through one of those doors is what the babysitter in the third one is freaked out by. Remember how she's kind of looking at that corner where Toby would have been and she oh, yeah. like gasps and leaves. I think maybe that closet was an entry like point. Another, like portal thing. Mm-hmm. I think there's a bunch of them. That's like my theory. Cool. But uh, yeah. She sees Katie come downstairs and she's like catatonic. Yep. And he's like, lady, help me. I'm in your house. I don't know and where I am. And we don't know if she can hear we don't know if it's a thing where oh is this time travel where you you can be a, a oh yeah a, like a passive observer yes i was I have a passive observer mm-hmm. but no she's just being creepy she turns around and starts screaming for she mika. literally she looks him dead in the eyes and then just starts screaming for mika and we realize it's the end of the first movie yeah after she had gotten up and left and then started screaming for mika and, then and he- mika comes downstairs yeah mika comes downstairs and like sees hector and fights him and then gets stabbed by katie just like the end of the first one and then jesse's there too with his black eyes he must oh that scared me yeah jesse comes out of you forget you even forget jesse exists at this point because you're so fucking distracted by the fact that this is all from the first movie yeah and then jesse just like pops out oh wait and then this says in a moment of, in the moment of silence grandma lois appears out of nowhere and picks off oh the was that lois well no it also says something about jesse but gets confronted and lunged at by jesse who is now under yeah yeah jesse I, jesse pops out that yeah. scared me oh but then okay so it, lois is there too i did notice in this jesse practical demon face in this good which i appreciated good. and it actually scared me we don't me. need the scare yeah, the yeah. Stupid CG. uh but yeah at the end it's yeah, after Hector gets attacked, the camera falls. And I just thought it was like a witch that kind of came out of the portal oh, after him. But okay. if it's Lois, that's a lot of fun. That's great, dude. Yeah. And that, yeah. We clapped after we that. We did. We it was like, great. Yeah. Like, we this we is... were the fucking Shia LaBeouf gift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Like... No, that was just what I wanted. It was so fun. Yeah. Marked yes. ones, fucking awesome. Marked ones is great. And Entertaining it's... through and through. Awesome ending. Great way to tie the whole series together. Yeah. Uh, I think if you like, oh, and the uh, the doorway thing too is what I think was going on in the the end of the third one where they're like, it's time now we're going to meet him and Lois is bringing the two little girls up. I think and they go that's upstairs. how they end up in oh that weird basement. Sure, I think that's what's going on. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Great stuff. I'm so sad that Ghost Dimension is uh, poorly regarded by knows, everyone. Oh, even no, like, by, cause really? Because, like, Marked Ones has a bad Rotten Tomatoes, but all the people fans were, were yeah, like, it's People were good. like, oh, I'm glad you're covering it because this one's good. Yeah. But no one is really. No one has defended Ghost okay. Dimension as far as I've seen. And, in fact, one person called it the hot mess found footage movie we're looking for. So. Okay. okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. I feel less uh, bad about it. Doing that one now, too. Yeah. I just wish that we had another Marked Ones quality film in this Maybe story. Maybe next time they're doing another one. Are they doing any more? Do we know? Yeah. Oh, Remember, it was like right before we started recording uh, the pool party series. They like announced another one. Excellent. Yeah. All right. This battery's dying. So yeah, my camera. Yeah, both the cameras are. But uh, until then, you can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, DeadMeatStore.com. Yep. Get those new shirts. New shirts. And email DeadMeatPod at gmail.com whenever you want to. And uh, Well, not like whenever you want to. I get yeah, a lot just, You know, if you're bored, <laughs> no. go ahead and email and just ask <laughs> Chelsea what she's doing. She really appreciates those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry for the rushed ending. Again. And the batteries are dying. We filmed two in a row. That's why. Yep. But leave comments. <laughs> we love comments yeah. about this stuff. And let us know what you think about paranormal activity. Because we're having a good time. Oh, yeah. But until. I feel like rejuvenated. I know. Thank movie. you, Marked Ones. Fucking oh, thank you, Marked there Ones. There it goes. Uh, Chelsea's camera died. But until that, <laughs> until next time, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Me Podcast. Bye.